So how do we learn how to solve problems? What's the scientific approach? The first thing we need to do is actually recognize what the problem is. You, it's hard to solve or fix something if you don't know what's wrong. So first we recognize what the problem is and we state it clearly. And this generally involves making some sort of an observation. Okay, so I had six kids and five of them are boys, so there's been a lot of pee at our house. So you'll hear pee stories periodically and I apologize if that offends you. You could ask me and maybe I'll remember not to do that, but anyway, here goes. So there's a puddle on the floor in the bathroom. This isn't good, okay? There shouldn't be puddles on the floor in the bathroom. So what's the problem? Okay, there's liquid on the floor. This is, this is not good. For one thing, it's just annoying when you walk in there in your socks and your socks get wet. I mean, maybe it's water leaking from the toilet. Maybe a child stood there and peed in their pajamas during the night and it just ran down their legs and left a puddle on the floor. Maybe the cat did it. You know, there's all kinds of, of possibilities, right? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But recognizing the problem, stating it clearly. Okay, there's water on the floor. We need to know how this came to be and perhaps how we can keep this from happening in the future. Proposing possible solutions to the problem or possible explanations for this observation. In more science speak, this is called formulating a hypothesis. Okay, what is that water, that liquid? Where did it come from? Okay, so I kind of mentioned this already. Well, you know, maybe somebody spilled a glass of water. Or maybe the toilet's leaking. Or maybe a child peed on the floor. Or maybe a cat peed on the floor. You know, a variety of possibilities there. So those are hypotheses. How do we know which one of those is, is right? We need to decide which of these is the best or which is the most reasonable. And we do this by doing experiments. So how could we figure out what that liquid is? Well, my general approach is to wipe it up with a paper towel and first look at the color. White paper towel, if you wipe up water, it just looks wet and it's still white, right? Usually pee is kind of yellow. So you wipe it up and the paper towel's yellow. And you're like, mm, I don't think we had any Mountain Dew in the house. That's probably urine, okay? And then how do you decide if it's cat pee or little boy pee? I know from experience that cat pee smells very different. Cat pee has a very distinctive smell. We've got cats that express themselves. It's really, you don't want to come to my house. It's not good. Anyway, you, you perform an experiment. You do something, and then you look at the results of that experiment and decide what it is. So you wipe it up with a paper towel, and it's kind of yellow, and you smell it. And it kind of smells, but not too strongly. And you're like, yeah, that was probably Andrew peeing in the bathroom. Now, whether he did that during the night or just missed because he really just doesn't care that much, you know, that's, that's the next problem. But do you get the idea of how we, how we do problem solving in science? And of course, you know, in the lab, we're, we're applying them to, you know, much fancier sounding things. But I like to try to apply these ideas to real life and use analogies. Because a lot of the stuff we talk about in chemistry is very abstract. You mean, you, you can't picture electrons and protons and stuff real easily. And so I'm going to try to use a lot of analogies and say, well, it's like this in real life so that you can get a mental picture and helpful, hopefully understand it a little better. In your book, on page, I believe it's on page 6, there's a little blurb, a little story called A Mystifying Problem. I would encourage you to read that. It's an illustration of how a scientific approach to problem solving was used um, in a very serious situation that a couple encountered. They were getting sick for unknown reasons, and they were trying to, you know, the doctors couldn't help them and trying to figure out what's going on. So I would encourage you to read that. Okay, we're going to play the name game. Last semester, this is funny because I hadn't looked at the slides and I couldn't remember what the name game was, so we, we skipped it. 
But this semester, I looked. Okay, okay, I remember what the name game is. So here's the name game. I am thinking of a name. I've got a category, and I want you guys to guess the names. And I'm going to write down um, whether...